This will be a short video showing how Query Tracker helps you organize and track your queries to literary agents. But first, why is this important? Well, if you've done any querying before, you know that the publishing industry can move very slowly. In some cases, it can take months for an agent to reply to a query, so keeping good records is essential. After all, you don't want to query an agent if she's already considering your book, or not query an agent because you thought you already did. Another problem is trying to remember which agents you've researched and want to query, and which you've ruled out. With so many potential agents, this becomes a big problem. Typically, you'll start your agent search here. This is a list of all the agents in Query Tracker's database. By clicking an agent's name, you're taken to the agent's profile page, where you can learn specific information about him or her. If you decide you want to query this agent, or save her so you can research her later, all you have to do is check this box to add her to your query list. As soon as I do that, this icon appears, which means she is in my query list. And now if I go back to the search page, I see the same icon here by the agent's name, reminding me that she is in my query list. Then when I'm ready to send a query to this agent, I click her name again and go back to her profile, so I need to record the fact that I sent a query. So I click the icon here, and this brings up a window that asks me to enter in how I sent the query and when I sent the query. Let's say I sent this query via regular mail, and I sent it back on the 10th. Click Save, and now a new icon appears next to the last one. This one indicates that I sent a query via regular mail. When I get a reply from this agent, I just click the icon again, and now the window has a place to record the agent's reply. Let's say she requested a partial manuscript, and the date she requested it was the 11th. And now a third icon appears. As you can see, this is a simple way to view the history of a query. Just by glancing here, I see I added the agent to my query list, I mailed the query, and received a request as a response. And if I go back to the search page and look at this agent, it shows me the icon of the last thing that happened with this query. And actually, I don't even have to go to the agent's page in order to change the query status. I can click the icon here, and the same pop-up window appears. Now let's look at another agent. After researching this agent, I decided that he just isn't a good match for my book. So I don't want to query him, and I don't want his name popping up all the time, since I already ruled him out. I can check this box here to add him to my Do Not Query list. And now the query status shows this red X. And of course, when I return to the search page, I have the same red X next to his name, reminding me that he is in my Do Not Query list. This way, when I'm browsing through the list looking for a new agent to research, I know I've already ruled this one out. Now, as I said earlier, this is a list of all the agents in Query Tracker's database. But what if I only want to see the agents I've added to my query list? Well, all I have to do is go up here and click the Queries button. And now I'm presented with a list of only the agents in my query list. And that's just some of the ways Query Tracker can help you stay organized when you're querying literary agents. Thanks for watching.